Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Well, welcome back. And look who we have here. We have Manny Pacheco. How you doing, Manny? I'm doing well, Art. John, good to see you. Manny, uh, the pleasure is all ours. I, I'm glad we've got you here today because I have, you being the Hollywood historian, I have an interesting, I don't know what you call it, tidbit, piece of trivia that I found just the other day, completely out of the blue. I was researching the song, I Remember You, a, a big hit in 1960 something with Frank Eifeld, 63. Right. I remember you, you're the one who made my... So I'm looking at this on, uh, I don't know, Google or YouTube or something. And I look up, because I'm that kind of guy, I want to know who wrote the song. Turns out it's Johnny Mercer wrote the lyrics, famous songwriter. Best, and the, the song was written by the director of the movie in which this, fit, this song appeared. And the movie was called Fleets Inn, mm. 1941. <laughs> and it it was originally sung uh, by and uh, Jimmy Dorsey was this is a, a typical movie musical Jimmy Dorsey orchestra plus um, why can't I think of the name of the famous actress singer at any rate who knew that I remember you came from a movie musical it wasn't the big lead song of the musical as far as I know. It later went on. To, it's been recorded many, many times, covered by many, many artists. Um, but I found it fascinating that there could be a song that became so popular, never connected or disconnected so quickly mm -hmm. from the movie in which it originated. And I guess the, the reason I bring this up is because there's got to be a lot of movie musicals that have had a lot of hit songs um, that have been just kind of... Uh, but you don't you don't you don't you don't think of them as part of the song. So I, I do understand. Right. Uh, I, let me begin with the very first song that ever won an Academy Award, and okay. you you wouldn't think of it as a movie tune, because of all the folks who have who, who have delivered. Uh, the way you look tonight, Frank Sinatra's classic song. Really? Yeah, and it, it's from Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers film, in which Fred Astaire actually uh, uh, sings a portion of the tune. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, I'm. I, I, I believe it was swing time. It might have been the gay divorce say, but I, I believe it was swing time. But yeah, it, but it did win the very first Academy Award. And huh. so, so yeah, that's that's a great example of a tune that you just don't think of from a 1930s movie, when it's a 1950s hit for Frank Sinatra. Well, it's kind of, it's kind of <laughs> yeah. interesting that um, uh, uh, your well, well, your your knowledge spans not only forgotten Hollywood, but somewhat remembered Hollywood and modern Hollywood. So you've got the whole thing covered. <clears throat> but uh, the really interesting thing is all the stuff that you remember that we don't pay attention to. But today's musicals generally are stage musicals first, and then they adapt them to uh, film. And we don't need to talk about the good and the bad because there have been a whole bunch of them. <clears throat> but it used to be that the musical that we would see in the movies would be the first time it would show any place. Is that not correct? Sure, uh, but I can give you some really odd choices for taking a musical and making it a hit. Well, odd is good. I think go, most, go for odd. Yeah, the, the, the most famous of which is the tune from The Music Man, Till There Was You. Great, loving moment and big kiss between uh, Professor yes. Harold Hill and, and, and Marion the Librarian. And then the yes. Beatles turned it into a hit for themselves. <laughs> yes. Good, the, very good example of what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, the Beatles. Who would think that the Beatles would take a hit record, a hit, a hit song from a musical, and make it a hit record? Yeah. But the, yeah. you're right. It is a, it, it's a great, great example. And then there are other songs that you would think um, would be just hit records, not thinking that they're from any, any, um, any uh, movie or play. I think the, the, really the easiest example, You're the One That I Want from Greece, was actually nominated for an Academy Award. Sure. Uh, yeah. But there are others that are not as obvious. Uh, Nine to Five is an obvious one, too. The, the Dolly yeah. I mean, she appeared in the movie, so obviously the song would, would work. But how about, yeah. how about On the Road Again by Willie Nelson or right. Last Dance from Donna Summer from the movie Thank, Thank God It's Friday? TG, yeah. TGI Friday. You know, I mean, these were these were hit records, but you know what? They came from a movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
I think there's part of this phenomenon is that um, if the song is the title song of the movie, Nine to Five, yeah. is a good example. Of course, it's memorable. Of course, it's tied to the movie. But if it's just a another song and a string of a dozen songs within the 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 movie, uh, which is what musicals are really, the Nine to Five wasn't even a musical. Um, that that's easy to get those songs get lost, their origin get lost. That's that's really true. And another great example from the 1960s, more great classic, you know, more than Mondo the, Kane. The theme the from it's called the theme from Mondo Kane. More. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the movie wasn't Mondo even Kane. anything. It was it was just a. Eh. But the song lives on. It's it's such a, it's a standard. It's just it's beautiful. It's lush. I think the here's what we should get at. Many uh, of the, the songwriters of hit records of popular music from the 1930s through maybe even into the 1960s also were, were song score writers. They would write hit songs for movies. So you would get somebody like Jimmy Van Heusen and Sammy Kahn writing uh, All the Way for Frank Sinatra, yes. but it also appeared in a movie. Uh, yes. uh, Bing Crosby would have songs like that. Hoagie Carmichael would write songs for movies and they would become hit records. Jo you had mentioned Johnny Mercer is prolific in the amount of tunes that he wrote that eventually uh, became absolutely great standards and big hits. Uh, one that comes to mind, I want to make sure I get this. It might as well be Spring. Great oh, yeah. song from State Fair written by Johnny Mercer. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, it, it was a hit record by so many, so many great uh, singers. Uh, yeah. Blues in the Night, Dinah Shore. That was from a movie called Blues in the Night. Now, right. it, it, the list just goes on and on and on. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it, this is such a great topic because it's it's hard to unravel the film music from the hit records because they were so commingled particularly uh, from the 1930s into, I'm, I'm, I would say, the mid-1960s. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the phenomenon of hit songs um, hitting, uh, uh, songs from musicals uh, hitting the, the, the general uh, music population uh, really goes back to, to Broadway, mm -hmm. uh, where you had uh, Broadway plays, Broadway musicals, uh, with a lot of hit songs that got into, they sold sheet music and, and people started that's right, that's singing right. that, and playing that's, the songs. That so, starts at, yeah, that starts at the turn of the century with Tin Pan Alley. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yep. Yeah, but there's, an, there's another, the opposite side of this uh, I find interesting too. And that is in recent years, last 20, 30 years, movies that are not musicals, we haven't had a lot of musicals in the last 20 years, but every movie that's made still wants to win an award. Well, one of the awards is best song, not best score. That's another award, right? They want best song. Well, what do they do? They hire some rapper, they hire some pop group to write a song, which is the title song. Most of them are absolutely horrendous. They have nothing to do with the movie. They're not great songs. but. <laughs> The, the filmmakers throw them in because, hey, what the hell? we got to have a song over the closing credits. Maybe we could win an also, award. I think that, that today, know, many of the scores that do create uh, hit music are done for animation, like Randy Newman and even Elton John. So many of them are done for yeah. that. Uh, uh, La La Land, uh, uh, Lady Gaga you know, was one of the few that actually wrote a particular lead song for a dramatic movie. A star yeah. is born. Yeah. You know, you make a really great point, Art. Uh, animation has been for the last, oh, maybe 40 years, 50 years, maybe 60 years. Uh, Disney has just been prolific yes. at providing uh, music that became hit records. I mean, if you think about it and, and, and then people adapting when you wish upon the star. It's a great song for Pinocchio, but you know, it was a big hit for Linda Ronstadt. <laughs> I mean, I, who knew? And, and there is a difference between the score for a movie and song. A song is a self-contained uh, entity. And, and you're right, Disney is, um, goes back, has a long history of working with great songwriters, the Sherman Brothers, the Sherman to come up with wonderful songs that right. drop into a, 
uh, I think of Mary Poppins, the score in Mary Poppins. Oh, but also also the Jungle Book and Winnie the Pooh. So, and Winnie, Winnie and the Pooh. And, and anytime I can mention Winnie the Pooh, I'm a happy guy. So just oh. so you know. <laughs> and, you know, it's been blustery lately. So, you know, it kind of fits. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, before we get into chasing the half a lump around the bush, <laughs> we should we should wrap yeah. this up. And do you have a favorite song from a musical? Yeah, film do or I, they do you want to yeah. sing us out? Uh, <laughs> do I or want Hummus to out. sing us out? Us out. <laughs> Mr. Grinch? Uh, well, the Grinch is great. I mean, I do love the Grinch. Uh, you know, there are there's a number of songs that I just love from the 1960s. Um, uh, uh, windmills of, of your mind. Uh, Michelle Legrand was great at, at creating great, great tunes. God, if I had to pick one though, I'd be, I'd be, it'd be hard for me to just pick one song that just, you know, maybe maybe something written by Burt Backrack and Hal David, like raindrops keep falling on my head. I mean, it's hard, it's hard not to pick that. It, it, it's such an important part. Yeah. The score itself is such an important that, part of the film. How does that film, go? That I forgot moment. that melody. How does it go? <laughs> Raindrops keep falling on my head. Okay, that's uh -huh. all you're going to get. That's it. That's it. That's <laughs> well, that's, that's more right, than man, you're going to get from us. Next time, we're going to make you sing the whole score. <laughs> I, feel, I feel so used right now. I can't even yeah, tell you. I, we thank you for that. <laughs> Good. Manny, this is always wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. Well, I'm happy to do so. And if you have a song in your heart, you might enjoy a film that goes with it. Uh, a song in my heart. That's a uh, 1936 Jerome Kern. No, well, I'll, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it appeared in the movie with Doris Day and James Cagney. I, I'll be thinking of you guys the next time I am watching a film that has the uh, song Over the Rainbow, because you are two pots of gold. Ooh. Ooh. A double rainbow. Bye, everybody. Bye. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.